Uh, we're going to begin with our, our opening hymn. We'll stand. on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to keep your commandments. I am a companion of all who fear you, of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O oh Lord, full of your steadfast love, teach me your statutes. Let us now confess our sin to our God, our merciful Father. Gracious God, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are by nature sinful and unclean. Daily we do things we ought not do and do not live up to our calling as the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. We justly deserve your punishment in this life and for eternity. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is in the merits of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, O God, and grant us remission of all our sins, and lead us to renewed lives that reflect your goodness and love. Now, God is gracious and merciful. 
He hears our supplications and joyfully restores us to his fold by the command of our Lord. And as and is called an ordained servant, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats, is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture? And to drink of clear water that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet 
And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. God. The epistle is from 1 Timothy chapter 1. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law, without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine in accordance with the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country? And go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time, I told him to come forward for the children's message. <laughs> Well, Jesus was talking about some uh, things that got lost and were found. And have you ever lost something that, that, that you, you really valued and, and couldn't find it? Has that ever happened to you? I bet every one of you have had something like that happen, right? And, and uh, we lose something and we can't find it. You know, I was just up moose hunting and we were going to leave the cabin and I, I talked to Cody and Drew, and I said, you make sure you, you have your cell phones on you. You don't want you leaving anything. And, uh, and they checked, and they, they both had their cell phones. And uh, um, guess what Pastor f couldn't find? His wallet. I, I couldn't find my wallet. And I looked through a bag that it should have been in, and it wasn't there. And I looked through bins on the boat. I couldn't find it. And I was starting to sweat a little bit and get a little <laughs> worried. And I ran back up to the cabin I had locked up and and because I was all ready to go, I searched through the couch cushions and, and everywhere I might have left it in the cabin, couldn't find my wallet. I finally went back down to the boat and it was in my life jacket. It was stuck in my pocket in the life jacket. <laughs> I was frantic. And, and then after I found it, you know what I said? Woohoo! <laughs> I found it. You get excited when you found, find something, right? And, and, uh, and Jesus was talking about, you know, lost sheep and a gal that lost, lost a coin, right? An expensive uh, coin. And, and, uh, and he said they were both happy when the, the shepherd found the one lamb that strayed. And, and the gal was sure happy when she found one of her silver coins. And, and uh, we're pretty happy when we find something that we've lost, aren't we? <laughs> and 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 but he was talking about more than sheep and, and coins. You know what Jesus was talking about? People, right? People. There's people that have never heard of Jesus, or and we call them lost, right? They don't have a shepherd. And and uh, and there's there's others that stray stray from church. Believe believe me, I've heard of people that stray from church. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and he says, we need to go look for him. And that's one of my jobs as a pastor, to go, go round up the lost and the straight, right? And, and it's also something that all of us can do. Something all of us can do. And, and you know how you do that? You get to know your, your friends. Get to befriend somebody. Get, get to know them and pray for them. Say, Jesus, could you change their heart? And can you change my heart so I, I'm, I'm concerned about their soul? And then we can invite them and say, hey, why don't you come to Sunday school? Why don't you come to church? You ever try that? It, it, and and uh, if your friends invited you to a ball game or something, you'd be thankful that they invited you. You might not be able to go. And sometimes they can't come, and they'll say, I can't this time. But you keep inviting them. And that's what we do. We invite others. And, and, and it says there's rejoicing in heaven over one person that comes into, into the fold. We'll, we'll pray. We'll pray. Thank you, Jesus, for finding me when I was lost. Help me to tell others about you. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up.
Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We hear again Jesus' words from the gospel where he says, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. You know, in the Old Testament lesson, Ezekiel was talking about uh, the children of Israel. There are rams in the flock who were ramming the the poor little lambs and the other sheep and uh, causing a lot of havoc, trampling down the grass so that the others couldn't eat it. And uh, he's talking about about the Pharisees that that were back, people back then that were all self-righteous. And they they tended to... uh, put other people down, chase people away from God. These are the rams that were abusing the flock. Things like that still happen in in churches today. There's people, as pastors, we call them wolves or alligators in the congregation. They're people that cause uh, a lot of grief in the congregation and can run people off from the church by their words and their actions. Then in the gospel today, Jesus talks about the shepherd who loses his sheep and goes out of concern looking for the lost, rejoices when he brings it back. And you know, you stop and you think, how how long would it take if you lost a, a pet of yours before you go looking for him? A couple hours, a couple days? <laughs> Usually you get pretty frantic when they don't come to the door. When you call them, if you can't find them, you go looking around the community and then posting signs at Fred Myers and on telephone poles if you haven't found them. Or if you lost your purse or wallet, like I did, losing my wallet. They're thinking I lost my wallet. I got pretty frantic. I got pretty excited when I found it. People are more important than dogs and wallets. You all know that. And, and that's what Jesus is saying. If, if sheep are important and, and a silver coins important, then how much more so should the lost and straying be? We should be working at bringing them back or bringing them for the first time. So as Christians, we're all mandated with reaching out to the lost and the straying. As a 
pastor and an under shepherd for the shepherd, Jesus. It's an awesome burden that's laid on my shoulders. And I think about it, having to give answer to the flock entrusted to my care by the shepherd <laughs> when I get to have it. Because you, you know what happens to stray sheep. There's coyotes, there's wolves, there's bears. They get eaten. They fall down in pits or fall in the river. There's awful things that can happen to them. And that's why we get concerned when we lose a dog or a cat. A, a car may have had an incident with our pet. You know what happens to Christians when they stray from Christ? Cut themselves off from the body of Christ and the communion of his church. Where they go into spiritual hypothermia. And, and if you ever, I almost, I got hypothermic at one time. One time I was out snowshoeing and it warmed up to 10 below or 30, uh, 10 below that day. <laughs> and so I was out hiking, working up a sweat. And then it, the sun started going down and it dropped down to 30 below and I was all wet. I was still a mile or two from the cabin and hiking on my snowshoes and and I used to, when I was out cutting wood, you sit down in the snow and it's like a beanbag chair. I thought, boy, I'm kind of tired. I'd like to just sit down in the snow and just rest for a little bit, maybe take a little nap. And, uh, and then I noticed I couldn't feel my fingers or my toes or my nose. And, and I was starting to get warm in my chest. And uh, uh, I thought, uh-oh, I'm going hypothermic. And I, I just wanted to lay down and, and sleep. If I had taken a nap there, I wouldn't have ever made it home. And that's what happens to Christians. You just feel this warm sensation and, and, and you just want to just rest uh, on Sunday instead of going to church. And pretty soon you fall asleep and you don't wake up. You know, we have a, a mandate to reach out to those who are, are lost and straying. And... Uh, how do we get them into church for the first time or get them to come back? Well, there's three easy steps. Well, not exactly easy. Um, the first step is pray for them. Pray for them and pray for your, yourself that God give you the words and the compassion to care for them enough to invite them to church. Second, you have to build relationships with them first. Uh, you have to get to know them and, and, and show that you care about them. These are friends and neighbors. That's how we should act towards friends and neighbors. And then it gets a little more difficult because it's when we, we start inviting them. And we just say, hey, come, come to church this Sunday. We've got something special going on. Or find an excuse to invite them. And, and, and then again invite them. And then again invite them. <laughs> I call it gentle persistence. One time I, I, I had a gal that she came to, to church, it was down in Iowa and, and uh, with her kids and her husband was usually uh, um, tired after work. And it was a, on a Saturday night, we had Saturday night service at that church, we had three churches. And it was on Saturday nights and he liked to just go home, watch a little TV and rest. And so after church, I knew where they lived and I'd, I'd be driving by and I'd see his pickup. So I'd swing in, <laughs> I'd knock on the door, Hi, I'm Pastor Carl. I know you, Pastor, you know. And just want to say hi, you know, invite you to church sometime. And Okay, you know, and he wouldn't be in church. And I kept doing that. His wife said, you know what? My husband thinks you're stalking him. <laughs> I said, I, I am. <laughs> you know, he can get me off his shoulders. He can come to church. He, he did start coming. But he, it's, it, it's fun. And, and it, 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 it's like the innocence of children. They, they, they hey. Grandma and Grandpa, how come you don't come to church? Or, you know, we just, hey, invite, invite them and just keep on. It's gentle persistence. You know, we are our brothers and sisters keepers. We are all given the great, great commission to, to reach out to the, the lost and those that haven't heard of Jesus. We have plenty of opportunities in our own community. And uh, this, this last month, I, I went up to Manly for the first time. And, and um, I, 
I had gone over to Soldovia for four years, once a month. And I'm, I'm Lord willing, going to be um, uh, going this month and next month. And, and last month was the first one. But I came in uh, to the, the chapel there in Manly. The Catholics had pulled out. They gave the church to the city of Manly. And they said, we want it used for religious purposes, the church. So I walked into this church, and there were 30 people packed in this little log chapel. It absolutely blew me away. And it's a four-hour drive up. It's a four-hour drive back. Thankfully, Steve flew me up this last time. And I have somebody that said they, they might, they're, they're going to be able to provide um, uh, fares for me to fly up once a month. But it, it's important that we reach out not only in our community, but beyond our community. And around the world, we've got exciting things happening in mission work all over the, the world. And I, I had a, a real good friend, Gary Tease, a mission. He, he, he speaks at churches and gets uh, missionary support. He said, we have, we have uh, thousands of baptisms going on per year in Vietnam. We send seminary professors over to Cambodia. These, these lay evangelists and pastors come across the border into Cambodia for two weeks of intensive uh, training with a, a seminary professor and a translator, and they go back, baptizing whole villages. And we've got, we've got uh, uh, Lutheran school, schools in China, communist China. Um, exciting things happen all over the world. We have... Uh, missionaries in places where they're forbidden to be. And I, I know about these people and I can't even tell you where they're at, but in countries where they could be killed uh, for sharing the gospel. Exciting things are happening. And, and, and you know, it's, it's really exciting when you, when you bring, some, bring somebody to Jesus. And, and uh, I tell you something, I almost get choked up. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to have five to eight baptisms, or possibly more, adult baptisms. There was a, a guy I was talking to, and it was Robert Heffel, director of Lutheran Indian Ministries. Grew up Quaker, had been dedicated as a child, had confessed his faith in Christ, but had never been baptized. He told his sister, he says, I'm, I'm going to get baptized. I'm director of Lutheran Indian Ministries. I uh, Pastor Carlson said, you know, it's important that we get baptized. <laughs> and, and she says, well, if you are, then I am. His brother said, I am too. And his other, other uh, sister, there's five of them in the family, all over 40 years old. And they said, we've never been baptized. We'd like to do it together as a family. Then he told others, and, and others were saying, we'd like to get baptized also. Uh, folks, I've never seen the likes of this. I, I, I've baptized up to two sailors at a time. I've never had a, a mass baptism of adults. And that's going to happen tonight at the beginning of the, the 6 o'clock service. That is exciting, you know, and, and emotional for me um, to see things like this happening. And, you know, it's, a, it, it, it's really exciting. It would be exciting for you, too. Just that gentle persistence, getting to know somebody, inviting them, and seeing them come or come back to the church. What's the, what's the payback for us? What did Jesus say in the, the gospel today? He says, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Not only there'll be celebration here, there'll be celebration in heaven going on. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Life everlasting. Amen. Remain seated. I'm going to invite the um, open arms board to come up for, their inst for installation. They, they have a... Uh, come on up. Come on up. We, 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 I won't be in the spotlight. We can be out of the spotlight down here. But they have a, a different cycle than the other um, uh, boards and officers. They, they begin in, in July. And so, um, and you guys can turn and face me if you don't, and forget about them. <laughs> and, uh, um, but officially recognizing your, your service and, and uh, um, to our Lord in this church and, and open arms. 
Uh, beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. Uh, to that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this Constitution establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. And so doing the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It's not right that we should give up preaching and the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven good men, women, of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Uh, we have uh, Aaron Matre is the chairperson of the, the um, board. And there's Janice Witt, vice chairman, and Lisa Carlson on the board. And, <laughs> and, and uh, Linda Gronwald and Wendy Brandt, Dor Dr. Doris Heilman, and Heather Cook. They've been elected uh, to serve on the, on the Open Arms Board. And you've been uh, chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility, both at Zion and Open Arms. You're to work with the pastor that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You're to see that this... Um, you're to see that the temporal affairs... Um, of open arms <laughs> this con not this, and this congregation are properly administered and that proper support is provided to the worker, workers of open arms. You are to assist in caring for, for, for all and cultivating harmony among, uh, among the, the, the staff and school and promoting the general welfare and furthering the kingdom of God, Christ, of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it's especially important that you as office bearers in his church show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. Beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises of the faithfulness spoken by these women whom you've selected to serve as officers of open arms. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you so that you may be glorified and his work be done in our midst as a congregation? If so, then answer, we do. We do. Sisters in Christ, I install you as officers of Open Arms uh, Lutheran School Child Development Center in the, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Go in the name of the Lord, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for serving. Thank you. This is a this is a a, a, a work of God we're doing, and for for those precious children. Thank you. Maybe. We rise.
Faithful shepherd, you are so good to us, even when we stray from your presence through disobedience to your commands. You bring us back into your presence through the good news that we have received in this time of worship. Grant that we treasure all we possess in the gospel of Christ. And guiding shepherd, you lead us with your mercy that we may dwell in your presence forever. Salvation is found solely in Jesus Christ our Lord. Enable us to bring the good news of his life, death, and resurrection to all souls for whom he offered his life. Enable us to open our lips and declare your wonders to the world. And protecting shepherd, you guard and bless those who take refuge in you. Watch over the land in which we live guiding all servants among us to act justly with the wisdom from above. Enable us to dwell in security and peace. Lead all Christians to be people of worship, prayer, and service, so our communities are blessed by you through the works of our hands. Send us out to represent our Savior in all we say and do. And healing shepherd, you bind up the wounds of those who suffer in both soul and body. We name before you uh, Sherry Schleter, recovering from surgery, and, and Craig Robinson, and Kathy Rearson, Philippa Treacle, Julie, Charlie, and, and, uh, and Steve Malcott, and Cody Cook, and Wendy Souza, Lorna Wright, Doris Cunningham, and the sister Steve Weiss, Jessica, and for others that we name in our hearts at this time. And for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, for the family of Mary Starr, Tanana, and the family of Robbie Casey, for others, O oh Lord, grant them your peace and your presence. Be with the, the families and staff at Open Arms. Continue to work your, your mighty works over there that we restaff the, the school and, and, uh, and that all be to your glory and, and the, the school and church is good. Lord, we give you uh, thanksgiving for um, Charlie and Daphne Smeltzer as they begin their, their life, married life together, joined in holy matrimony. We give you thanksgiving for the successful surgery for Kelsey for their safe return for Eli and Finn Ludwig, and for many other prayers of thanksgiving, O oh Lord, we give you our thanks and praise. Whatever the need and whatever the circumstance, draw your sheep into the fold of your care that they receive the healing you desire for them. Open our eyes to see your healing hand at work. As sheep who trust in their faithful shepherd, we bring these prayers along with all the unspoken prayers of our hearts before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament and my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share the peace at this time. We pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another.
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Oh,